And here they come, hooking up back there, trying to make a move. On the inside, number 32, Jeff Green. Now, as they get side by side, can the leader, LaJoy, get away? Hey, that's the best thing could happen to Jeff, him. Jeff Green got sideways there. Underneath the 27 car, Casey Atwood almost lost control. And a big... Oh, trouble, trouble! Oh, and one car upside down, Casey, Casey Atwood. Atwood. And sliding through the grass, Kenson. White is around. White and yellow flag. Atwood's car is destroyed. And did the leader get the caution flag? I if believe he did. It if he did, they will slow to the checkered flag. If not, they have to come around. Mike McLaughlin's car. Left, right, torn up. The leaders did get the yellow. So Randy LaJoy, who saw it all unfold in his mirror, can come around to claim his second championship of this race in three years. But he's coming around at a pretty good clip. He's not sure of that, Mike. He's racing right back to the flag. And wins it, Randy LaJoy. Two wins in three years. And in the final five laps, the 18-year-old rookies learned some hard lessons. The window net is down on Casey Atwood's car. That is a signal that he makes that he is okay. So the rescue crews know that. He is on the radio to his crew right now. Boy, that's good news to hear. Woo. The rest of the field comes by under caution. Jeff Green finishes second. Bobby Hillen, a hard-earned third. Andy Hillenberg fourth. And Adam Petty will finish fifth. Matt Kenseth, Kevin LePage. Kevin Grubb, Jeff Burton, and Chuck Bound will be the top ten. Twelve career wins for Randy LaJoy. Eight on the super speedways. Four on the short tracks. There's Atwood throwing into the ambulance. Headed to the care center to get checked over. It's mandatory they go there. That does not mean that he has any problems at all. You have to go to the hospital. And if you look at that car, you can see why that trip to the care center is mandatory. The important part is where Casey Atwood is setting all the roll cages up. Danny Bagwell running third at an accident much like this in yesterday's Dash Series race. You can see the front away. wheel is gone off of uh, Casey's car, but the roll cage that Buddy was talking about, that's all in this area here. And of course, that's where the driver sits over in this area. So, so that part held up well. I'm still, I cannot understand where Adam Petty went during that wreck, but he made it through there. Now the roll cage in this car comes up and over and sur virtually surrounds the driver. There are big bars in the doors, and then all along here, you see these bars. That's part of the roll cage structure that connects back to the frame. The driver is really encased in a steel cocoon there, so he's protected as much as possible. And you even have a bar that goes here and back down this way in the center part of the car to keep the middle part of the top from caving in. There's a window net on the left side and one up in the ceiling to help keep the driver contained and safe. Dick Bergeron? Jason Radcliffe is... Uh, Casey Atwood's crew chief of this accident happened right in front of you. What is it like to watch your driver flip right in front of your pit? Well, I, I can't explain it. I'm still pretty shook up right now, but he's okay. Uh, he talked to us as soon as the car came to a stop, but I'm still looking for my heart around here somewhere on the ground. It's pretty rough. We had a, we had a good shot at it. Uh, he did everything he could. Uh, we got good engines from Ron Hutter. We want to thank Castro. Uh, We'll get him next time. The most important thing right now is he's okay. Yeah, it sure is. Casey Atwood's all right. Everybody is very relieved about that, Mike. And he'll be credited with 16th place finish. Dick Bergeron, one lap down. Watch that number 27 car on the left side of your screen. Andy Hillenberg gets in the back of him, and he gets him to the outside wall. You can see the 18 car there. The hood's all torn up on it where he got in the back of Casey Atwood. Goes right up and almost over Mike McLaughlin. Back down on the back end and then back to the front end. There goes the radiator and the springs. Now the good part is that probably looks really bad to the racing fan, but it's sliding on the roof. That's where all the roll cage is. It does not start turning over until it scrubs off a tremendous amount of speed. Now watch him when he hits the grass here. It'll turn over several times there, but the speed is down where it's not like a 190 miles an hour crash. Okay. 
Casey Atwood's Daytona Dream ended one lap too soon. Watch right here when they make contact. He's in a straight line, makes contact there with Al Andy Hillenberg, who was right behind him, run right in the back of him. And you see McLaughlin lose control there after he bounced off of Hillenberg as Atwood flew up and over him. Here's a look from behind. Didn't take much, but right into the back and turned him right into the wall. You know, it, it almost looked like Mike McLaughlin might have been pushing Andy Hillenberg, and he had no way to back off. They were coming down to get the white flag and certainly were going for it. Watch this. You're riding with Mike McLaughlin. No. No. Definitely Andy Hillenberg got in the back of him. That's all. <laughs> Well, we've heard that too much today. Wow. You saw the officials with the caution flag out very quickly as leader Randy LaJoy came to the flag. But as we mentioned, LaJoy not sure if, it, if he had passed under the caution or not, came around at speed. See him coming in a straight line there. They make contact. You'll see 27 just turn right from the contact from behind. When that car gets sideways to the wind, a little bit of uncontrollable lift there. And amazingly, Hillenberg comes on around to finish in fourth place. You see the damage to the right front corner, but like you say, Ned, he did make it around. And the best thing that happened to Casey Atwood inside that car is that each one of those impacts took off a little more speed, a little more momentum. Exactly. As it went over and around. If that had happened right there while he was still running 180 miles an hour, it would have been much worse. Well, right. Let's see from the blimp and see the relationship. That white car, McLaughlin, you see, is a couple of feet back of Hillenburg. They just touch. Boy, what a shot. That tells the story. McLaughlin, 34, almost gets through there. A wild ride for 18-year-old Casey Atwood, a brush with the wall for 18-year-old Adam Petty, and the fellow they both call the old man proves once again at Daytona that old age and experience is a match. 